The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, be on my mind, be on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two and to a third one, each according to his ability. And then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the one who received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. And he said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have five more. And his master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. And his master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share my master's joy. Come and share your master's joy. <laughs> and then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person. You harvest where you did not plant, and you gather where you did not scatter. So, out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is, back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked and lazy servant. And so you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather what I, where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one who with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and they will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel parable, a man going on a journey. He went away and then returned to settle accounts with his servants. You know, of course, this end of the liturgical year, we remember the second coming of Jesus, promised in Scripture. And this parable, and the ones we've been hearing and will continue to hear, talk about that inevitability. When Christ comes again. The two comings of Christ, for me, took a long, long time to understand. And it seemed almost like science fiction. Why would Christ come again if he already came? But this is a fundamental aspect of our faith. And the reason for it, I have come to appreciate is profound and has great implication for us. You see, it always had been prophesied before Jesus came the first time that God would intervene in human history in a dramatic, decisive, and powerful way to bring about the kingdom so that those who are faithful would be justified and receive their reward, and those who are unfaithful will be punished and thrown out forever. 
judgment. However, God knew if that prophecy was fulfilled the way people anticipated that it happened on a day, many would not be saved. And so for God, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. And so that day of the Lord has been spread over thousands of years by the first and the second coming of Jesus. Jesus begins that final terrible coming over a process of time by coming 2,000 years ago now as a babe, gentle, adorable, that would alienate nobody. A poor babe in a manger. And then that child who is God grows to share with us the Father's love and the Father's desire that all people be saved. And through his death and pouring out of his life on the cross, he shows us the depth of that love, forgives us of our sins, and invites everyone into that salvation, that kingdom. And through his resurrection, establishing the church and its sacraments he dispenses that grace through all time and history and space but he will come again to finish the process and there will be a final judgment but it's God's will that all people be saved and the delay of the final coming the culmination of the day of the Lord that's being spread over thousands of years is delayed so that more people can be saved because God is all just and will establish the kingdom in justice as was foretold but God is all merciful and wants everyone to be a member of that and so this parable talks about what we his servants are to do before the second coming you see I think and I hope we are saved and that's good but Jesus wants more than that he wants others to be saved, which means he wants us to use what he has given us to multiply the kingdom of God to produce fruit. That's the whole reason for the two comings. That's the whole reason for his delay. For us not to do that is to waste his plan. The talents in the time of Jesus were money. One talent was anywhere from one to ten years wages it was a lot of money but really the money in Jesus's day represented power the ability to make change the ability to accomplish things and so this is more about the gifts that God gives us to promote his kingdom his power his authority his supernatural gifts but his natural gifts and there is different ways to respond to put our money in the bank and at least get interest, do a minimum. But God really wants more, right? He wants us to return and give 100% of ourselves so that whatever amount of gifts we do have will be fully used for his kingdom. And so it occurs to me to think a little bit about what are some of these talents or gifts and what would be the minimum interest and what would be the 100% that God is really asking? And so I would propose the minimum Jesus is asking in this parable to put your talent in the bank and return interest is to be a member of the church. It is to pray for others and their well-being. It is to encourage others. It is to give money to the poor and to the church to build up the mission. But I think more, it does require as a minimum that we testify about Jesus to others. If only those close to us, our friends, our family, our co-workers. It does mean inviting others to church and inviting them to pray and read the Bible and come and experience Jesus. It might even remain, mean sharing a good religious book with them. And then following up and saying, hey, have you read that book? Let's sit down and have coffee, tea, and talk about it. There are many ways that we can be using our talents to grow the kingdom of God. And there is a minimum requirement that Jesus really asks for us. But there's more. The one who gave 
and multiplied the two talents or the five talents, gave 100% of their lives and their gifts to God. Scripture talks about gifts. And you know the supernatural or the charismatic gifts, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, discernment, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prayer, intercessory prayer, praying for others, over others, even deliverance ministry. There's many supernatural gifts. And God wants to give those to us, but he only gives them to those who really plan on using them and already have begun to try to use them for his kingdom. But there are so many gifts that we overlook that are maybe natural gifts, but they're mentioned in scriptures as gifts of the Holy Spirit. To be a teacher, to be helper, a server, to be in an administration, to govern, to mentor, to lead others, to counsel others, to give them guidance, hospitality, writing, singing, volunteering, studying, learning the faith, explaining it to others, apologetics, and even other gifts that aren't mentioned in Scripture, like technology. If we know that and use it for the kingdom, it becomes a natural gift that's supercharged with his grace and goodness. And so today, this gospel passage, more so than any other, really explains our purpose in life, our vocation, what this life and time between the two comings is all about. It's pretty simple. Use our talents to build up the kingdom of God. That's your purpose. And since I, as a pastor, have a responsibility to lead and set a vision I can share with you the vision of this church, which really is our vocation. And that is to encourage others to develop those gifts, to uh, discern them, and to use them for the good of the kingdom. And yes, sometimes you'll use them here in church, but much more importantly, out in the world, in the workplace, to actually help bring about the kingdom of God in the world. But you know what? There's one other thing that I have learned as pastor. And I learned this, and I also have found others have learned this. The Catherine of Siena Institute, for example, has a workshop called Called and Gifted, where it helps you discern your gifts and helps you to think of ways to use those gifts for the kingdom. But when that ministry first started, they found something to be lacking. And I found that too. You see, before we really give God 100% of ourselves and use our gifts for the kingdom, that's a huge sacrifice. That's a great leap of faith. That can't be done unless we're first truly a disciple of Jesus. And so the first step of a pastoral plan of a parish and of our lives is to become first a disciple of Jesus. And what is a disciple of Jesus? A disciple of Jesus, you can model it by Jesus at the Sea of Galilee. When he walked by those disciples, they were at their fishing boats. And he said, come follow me. They left their nets. A couple of them even left their fathers and followed Jesus. A disciple of Jesus is someone who has encountered the risen Lord and it has changed the direction of their lives that they now orient following Jesus as the most important thing in their life, above their jobs, above their family, above all things, because God is, by definition, God. To be in this position takes a miracle, and it's not done without paying attention, without trying to make room for that miracle and asking for that miracle. And so the first step of a pastoral plan of the church in this church is to make disciples by creating opportunities where people can have a life-changing encounter with God through the Holy Spirit. Prayer groups, Bible studies, retreats, catechesis, praying with and over others, asking for this. And then, after we have become a disciple, then to look at our lives, what are our gifts and our talents, and how can they be used? And how is God calling us to use them for the good of his kingdom?
And so in conclusion, this parable finishes on a very war, uh, war, a note of warning, doesn't it? That you, those who bury their talents in the ground will be thrown out of the kingdom where there's wailing and grinding of teeth. You see, God has given us a great responsibility, knowledge of the kingdom of God, salvation, and an experience of how important that really is. And God's whole purpose is to delay so that we will share that with others. If we fail to do that, that is a grave neglect of the task God has given us. And he holds us accountable. God is love and he wants us to live in that love. But true love and true response to God's love makes us want to share that experience with others. And so, at least as a minimum requirement, getting interest on our talents, our salvation, and working for God in a minimal way. But ideally as a disciple with 100% of our life, that's our call. And that should be our aim. So that we, too, at the end of time, will hear what God said to those faithful servants. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been responsible with small things. Now inherit great things. Come, 